If you've been thinking about playing Cell Masks, there's a bit of a steep learning curve. Lucky for you, I've been playing on the closed beta and know a thing or two. So here's a few things that I wish I knew before I started playing. Starting off with very importantly, sometimes you want to die. It's good in this game to not die very often as you do actually get different character recognition that um, helps these followers that are running around everywhere later in game. But early on in game, kill yourself as much as you like and to be fair mid game as well. It doesn't matter too much but you press the escape key and it is the revive button down here. Couldn't find it for ages was killing myself to random dogs on the beach. But you'll more than most likely find yourself there or somewhere in the noob east coast of the uh, map I suppose because the beach does get a little crazy over here. But all these forms planes are pretty safe to spawn at and you'll choose one to start with. Up here is a really nice one as there's not too much aggressive stuff till you start he heading west. There are more temples and things that you'll need for upgrading some mask energy and we'll go into those different levels because that's a little bit confusing at first as well. But we want to choose in a spawn point probably down near the beach at first. You can eventually spawn at your thralls and your fireplaces and stuff but we'll go beach. Now you've spawned in or found yourself at the beach, leveling up is vital. You want to get as many levels as you can as quickly as you can to try and progress as you need to be at your max capability of this area before you can really reach the next area. There are different levels to crafting. The more you craft a certain something or the more you do a certain activity, the better you get at it. And those stats can be seen under tab, which is your inventory. And then you will see this inventory, which shows a whole bunch of different stats. This is very much the same as the followers we'll go into them later you can actually distribute all your levels here you've got your body level which is how you distribute your perk points here then all of these stuff are like your expertise levels so the more you do something the better at it you get we can only get to 50 currently but your followers have a chance to get much higher up so they're definitely worth getting just a tip later on but definitely something i wish i knew sooner than later but generally the more you level up stuff the better you will be at it you also then have masteries of weapons so the more you use a certain weapon the more you have options of unlocking other perks. Not a huge fan of the harvest by hand animation hopefully that improves with time as it is a fairly new game a lot of these things may improve upon time as well and change here and there but for the most part people starting out when this video is about this will benefit. You can usually find sticks and stones on the ground and some grass bushes for these type of things. You will have to unlock some stuff to be able to make stuff in the beginning and there will be a little west up in that left hand corner. I do think that they need a bit more of an in-depth journey guide though just to get people around the map because it's a huge map and a lot of it is full of death trap. We'll go into some of that a bit later too though. So you press T and you will open up your mask levels. Yet another level. It is a bit confusing. A lot of different UIs and that. I also think just quickly digressing that the UI down the bottom maybe needs to be able to be adjustable to where I want and all enhanced because it's quite small and a lot of people don't notice all the stuff going on down there but at a glance you can see your awareness level which is essentially your mask level and then you have your different HP how much mask energy you have how much sleep you have how much weight how much food how much water stamina and how much knocky outiness that you're under a lot of stats can be improved through this and when you are getting these crystals a lot of this stuff predecesses other information so I'll dip into it a little bit and then go into it fully on later when it is more part of that bit of the tip. As there's a lot going on you need some of that predecessing information. But you go into here you can level up these guys and get more XP gain eventually but you need to reach certain, certain awareness mask levels up here and you can also see your awareness levels and all that and your points you can distribute. There is a reset technology every time you do it. First one is free but then it starts costing these crystals which is the stuff that you can get at those temples and level up your mask with. Your first basic stuff is all free to unlock and you have to unlock this thing to unlock every next tier. I don't love this style of technology tree. I'm thinking something a little bit more Final Fantasy 12 would be a little bit more user friendly but just putting that out there. This as well as tips and tricks that I wish I knew this is also a little bit of my feedback on stuff that I do believe that they could approve upon as well and that you might find yourself a bit interesting. So you want to unlock a whole bunch of tools, a whole bunch of armor, weapons. The armor does cost you a little bit but you can make it in your 
your pocket the first grade, the stone weapons. Unless you loot a box that has the handles, you will need a crafting bench to make those. So you want to be able to get that carpentry bench straight away so you can make handles in it. Or be brave and loot a whole bunch of stuff. But for the most part, enemies won't let you loot it if they know you're there. So you've got to be really, really sneaky. And some places won't let you loot it if enemies are around at all. Now, as I mentioned before, there are different grades of crafting. So you can craft multiple and get a chance of getting even better stuff every time. Some things I think need improvement as well here are folders for different stuff because once you unlock a few things, scroll, scroll down. I got a legendary axe straight away because I'm quite proficient. But essentially keep grinding an area, running to like a way you want, harvesting the whole time, getting levels up, all of those different XPs, crafting stuff along the way because that's pretty decent XP as well and the different armors are nice to have just to keep you alive. And once you reach gold tier or if you're lucky some red tier then you can start moving on to the next area. If you push it too quickly you'll find out why you shouldn't real quick. Especially if you're a solo it is definitely advisable to do this strat. There are a couple of barbarian camps around that you can get your first starting kind of barbarians at. There's some up here. Oh no that's beasts. The beast ones have dogs at them and they usually have crystals. Some of these camps will just have um, a box with some rare stuff in it. But thrall camps are a very good way to get some stuff before your time as well. The next trick and tip is you don't have bedrolls in this game and campfires are your best friend. You can make bonfires here or you can also make the big campfire. They must be lit. I advise building a little hut with a, just a foundation, a wall and a ceiling or a couple of ceilings if you're building a campfire because you actually can't build too close to them but they're a little bit better. These ones won't block everyone's spawns though or ability to be able to place traps because a campfire is essentially your base location and it will claim the area around it for you. You must add the fuel up here if you click it will just kind of go into this part of the inventory so you've got to go boop. I hope they change that at some point but it is also good to note that you can get your followers eventually to maintain your stuff and you can set acceptable fuel types also so they'll pop in whatever fuel. This is mostly effective for your main campfire but they won't be going and putting all your hard-earned hardwood in there they'll just put sticks and whatever. Light that baby up and then go back and revive yourself and as long as it is lit you will see that bonfire. It's particularly handy because you can have a max total of six campfires but they do have a bit more HP and all of that as well. Things without a campfire will start to, to TK also so this is a very temporary bedroll. The bonfire will decay after a little while 3% every hour so keep that in mind whereas a campfire if you're pushing an area is a bit more advisable because it'll stay there as long as you've got a lot of fuel in it and it's lit. Your buildings will not decay. The death packages are these little guys and you just press T and grab everything out. If you do happen to get knocked down and start dying from something but you're not fully dead because there's a bit of two death states in this game you can in fact get back up from that as long as the enemy has lost aggro on you sometimes that doesn't happen they just continue murdering you anyway it's a little tragic I've had a lot of deaths lately but I digress. <laughs> Stop moving and heal yourself if you happen to have heals on you or crawl slowly somewhere but every time you move you'll start losing 10 HP or so. So try not to move as much as possible and your HP will start regenning until you get to a full state of whatever HP you have. So take off your armor also if you're in a safe spot because you'll regen quicker. So you'll hop back up, you'll have like no HP again so you'll have to heal again. So save some bandages because you'll passively regen very slowly also. It can be a bit of a waiting game. If you have a follower following you they can also come up and revive you if they have bandages on you. If they have bandages on them they are able to bandage themselves is what I meant to say if you have bandages on you. So they're pretty good at keeping themselves alive and if you're dead I'm pretty positive that the followers and your mounts don't get attacked once you're not in the area so you can actually go back and rescue your mount. Not very easily but everything does have a bit of an aggro range to it and it can hear you and see you so if you go back in some silenced and concealed armor or even go back real sneaky you have a better chance. And that brings us in to one of our next tips which is to do with the mask levels. By pressing T it will bring you to here and you'll see a whole bunch of different skill trees and it will lead you up this one first if you are following the little mini journey steps because gaining control of those followers is really really quite fun and even just having 
having followers in general. But eventually you'll be able to fight a boss and get actual control of those guys, which I'll show you in a moment. So you can run around as them with their way better stats, but if they die, they die. But if you die and you have a follower following you, you can actually respawn as them and get your stuff, which is what my tribe mate did last night. And he managed to get my stuff too. So he's just running around as one of our followers. Unfortunately, we don't know how to get his body back. So he's that follower until they die for right now. But when I know, I'll make another guide on that. Like I vaguely mentioned earlier, once you level up some of these stuff, you get better XP gain. So that's really fun. If you're controlling the thralls, they'll benefit from all that too. I'm not 100% sure if they're just your thralls, they'll benefit from this also, but it is very handy for yourself to level it up. One of the most important things you will need in this game is Q. And you will need combat instinct, life perception, quality assessment, habitat analysis, and mineral probe as soon as you can get them. Especially quality assessment, combat instinct, and life perception. Life perception enables you to press the Q and then you can do this. Having that, you will actually be able to see enemies within a further range, so you will um less likely to get messed up. You get a little bit of a warning symbol on the side of your screen. It'll be white if they've heard you, yellow if they've kind of noticed you, and red if they're gonna bite your ass. So it is best to see them before they see you. Once you get life perception and you can press Q, it's quite nice because without it, you can't see other players' names, so you really need it for PvP so you can see who's who. You you can see for quite a distance apparently i'm too far away from that other guy but then i can also hold q and get a bit more of a detailed perception so this is particularly handy when you're hunting thralls because see next to g and my mask there's a white diamond they can be different grades think arc same with these grade levels of your weapons it goes from white to legendary so if you see a red one they're more than most likely going to have some fun stats to them it's worth noting as well depending where you're built and depending on your camp by a level, people will come and attack you. A little bit like a purge, but they're pretty easy at first. If you're built on no beach and you have an actual campfire, one might even offer to be your first follower. Most of the time they try to attack you when you're built up here. So I aim to upgrade your campfire as soon as possible because that makes them a little bit more scared of you. But then if you move up into a high area like over here, they don't care. They still come and try and attack that campfire. The fire also gives a place for these guys to rest and you can make some stuff in it cooking wise, which you need for some other the cooking bits. Buffs, incredibly important in this game. You can have a few of them. That's a tip for in a moment though. I don't have the most good thralls because I keep getting my good ones murdered by being them and running around and dying. But you can see they have different stats here. You can also scan for them if they've gone wandering off because you can get them con to control benches, fight for you, harvest stuff. Although I don't think they're great at harvesting stuff personally until you have control of them and then they can be very good. Because if we go here. That's my tribe mate's one. I can't access him. There's someone that belongs to me. I can go control. You do a little ma mask swapsy and there are a few different masks that you can actually get. I've only got this type of one so far because I haven't fought the second boss yet but it's not too hard to fight the first boss especially if you have a couple of followers to help revive you and things like that and a bunch of buffs and that good armor. I did it without knowing any of that stuff so it was a struggle and of course my footage stopped two seconds before we actually murdered the beast. Typical. I can now access her and run around as her as if it was me, which is quite cool. You can look at all these stuff and these are some of the perks that they have that we don't have. They can level up and get rid of bad perks by just doing work for you. And they can also get to a higher level than we can as we can get to 40 at the moment, they can get to 50. This all may get to higher caps as well at some point. And you can distribute their points as well the same as you would yours. Some of them have fancy titles and can be even better than others. But in their proficiency, they see this lady, she can get to 115 jewel blade technicalities. So yes, I can't get to the 120 perk, but every point over the 90 will still add to these points. So it's still good to have. Ones that are in like 30 increments are best because then you will be able to get certain different buffs on certain different stuff. The more they do stuff, the more they'll level up. I probably should have done speed on that, but this was one of our first follow it's why she's so high level. Now we didn't know how handy they were at first we only had a couple and they did a couple of things here and there
in there, but you can actually then go into their work inventory and plan work for them. This love here maintains my campfire so it never goes out as long as there's wood about. We have another person going around harvesting wood, putting it in a box. You can get other ones to manage crafting tables. If you want them to prioritize a crafting table, you can move it around like so. You can also access it in the actual crafting table, which is pretty cool. And then also you can remote access other thralls like so if you're in their vicinity and control all their work and characters while you're in this inventory. You can also get inventory menu. Pressing J will enable you to see your clan. If you're not in a clan, you can see the playlist and the different clans. I wish there was a way for me to be able to see that even in a clan. You can go tribe events. You can go tribe defenses, which is the fever that the purgy type thing, if you're familiar with Conan, is generating. So the more you do stuff at those camps, the more people will be like, nah, you must leave. And they'll chuck it up in the little chat. The little NPCs will tell you, you must leave. And they'll try to destroy your stuff. You can build traps to avoid it, but yeah. So that's what that is. You can create patrols of your thralls to help prevent against them. And then you can go to this menu and around your campfire, you can select all your different thralls and see them, followers I should say, at a glance. And you can also go into that deeper part of them again there and access all of that here. Or just generally scroll to the next guy. If you wish to assign a follower to a workbench, you can easily do that by going appoint caregiver, scrolling over them, we'll see everything at a glance. Try and do the guy that's best in that. Just scroll over here, see which level of XP this gives. It's cooking proficiency, so I would want someone who's either low in cooking but has a high capability or is already quite high if I'm trying to cook high-end buffs because you get chances of getting like double stuff. So these buffs, pretty good shit to have. Some of them are just stuff to make other stuff with. But these buffs particularly, if you happen to want to level up yourself, just double click. You can start crafting. Go boop. If you want the dude who's assigned to it to craft it, press R. Make them craft it. They'll get the XP. Quinoa porridge, super important as soon as you can make it to start feeding to your followers and or yourself because you get all that XP gain, which is lovely. If you got stuff in boxes and it's not there and it happens to be grayed out like this or redded out, but you have it unlocked and you just don't have the materials in that, you can press D over it and then they'll go and find the materials for it. You can make them craft all of it forever or you can make them craft one. You can switch it around like so or you can do that. If there's only one being crafted, you can't cancel it usually. So if I was to go like that, I can't then get rid of that. I'd like that to happen, but keep that in mind. Also, buffs don't split well currently, so keep them all together in a stack. One or two people kind of carry the buffs each. Split them up amongst yourselves if you're in a team. Not advisable for one person to carry all of the buffs just in case you're the one that dies and your tribe mates might still want some buffs to get home, but you can distribute them out as you go. I'm hoping that they do fix the DK stack thing because that's a little bit annoying. So these here have almost four hours. If I was to press S on them and split the stack, they're both going to have four hours. If I put them back together again and say like if one had four hours and the other one had five minutes, if I put them together, then the whole stack would have five minutes. And then if I split them again, two stacks would have five minutes. If I eat the top one, the bottom one still has five minutes. That's a little bit annoying. The buffs are awesome in this game. It gives you reason to cook, but at the moment it's a little bit. So keep that in mind. Hopefully they fix it. This will still be an important tip, even if they have fixed it by the time you're viewing this. You can have a whole bunch of those different buffs too. Things like carrots and pumpkins and stuff are pretty good to carry around on you for a little bit of snacks because they don't overwrite your other buff. But you've got meat buff here and then you've got, I don't they have any cooked foods in here. <laughs> Staple buff fruits and vegetable buff. You can have beverage buff and a couple of other ones here and there. You can smoke some cigarettes and get another buff. And if the stuff's in this table, your followers will go around and get stuff out and start smoking cigarettes and eating the food that they like out of it usually. It's good to put a well-mixed diet in there. Don't just feed them up full of meat and corn because they will get sad and start being less productive. They like to eat the fancy foods every now and then as well. Sometimes if I've made some buffs and they're going to expire and I'm not going to be online. I just whack them in there and they eat them and they get a bit happy. You can also set boxes so they don't touch it. This is my no thrall touchy box so they don't go around getting drunk on me alcohols or trying to craft stuff out of any of this type of thing. Some shit in here is a little random currently that turned into a bit of a dump box. But you can also have things like hobby buffs. So as soon as you can start crafting these type of benches and making the predecessing stuff, even if you're not high enough level to make this stuff, make this stuff. Bananas and pineapples 
tools can only be got out of monkeys at the moment. You can capture monkeys and get them to harvest some stuff for you, but we'll go into that a little bit later too. Potentially a whole nother other tip, fully depth guide on it as well. But the next tip is start growing all of the stuff as well, because you'll need all of this stuff. Eventually your followers can maintain your um, plots for you. You just press E, set the plot, and they'll continue planting until they run out of whatever they run out of. This particular person can't plant any more of this stuff because we have no bone fertilizer and I restart it and can't learn it to get them to craft it. If one of your tribe mates knows something and you don't know it, you can be operating the bench. They can press assign craftment on it. They can start crafting it like they won't start. How do I say this? They can they can tell the bench to assign it to the crafting queue. And if you're there crafting it, you will craft it even if you don't have the technology unlocked to do it. So you can get some really good XP gains that way. Beehives are also a bit of a separate video, but as soon as you can get those, get those, you need at least 50 bees in them for them to start producing honey and you need bee drawing fluid, which you'll need some fruits to make. So you'll need those monkeys and start growing these fruits also. Plus the trees take so long to grow. The fruit and vegetable crops take a little less long, but in this area, it's actually pretty easy to get them from this barbaric barracks. They have arms at most of them and this one's a pretty easy one to access. It's the same if you're getting an alpaca mount, which I do have a bit of a separate video on. You can go up here and on this side, there's a really easy to get to little capturing thing of the alpacas. So you don't have to go and actually trap one yourself. Llamas are preferable though, if you are trying to get some of this area because alpacas just get you killed a lot, but they live even though we didn't. So it is good to routinely go and check those farms if you know their whereabouts. I'll have separate guides on that too. Go and harvest all that stuff because your alpacas and mounts eat a lot of food too. There's an annoying bird that you may have heard. <laughs> He's also quite a good thing to get all of the mounts and especially the chickens are good to get straight away as soon as you can start trapping that stuff because they particularly take time to start generating things. You'll need their poo to start generating this stuff. Although you can get rare drops of like compost out of those straw camp boxes and some of those rare receipts also and monkeys can collect the rare receipts. So we started most of this plot before I was even of level to be able to make the compost just because the thrall camp just up here happens to actually have a box out of that drops a lot of compost and stuff. Plus also the thrall camp over there, the big barracks drops a butt ton. You do definitely want to take a lower grade weapon with you when you're smashing out the pots over there to try and get the seeds and stews and stuff because yeah, the durability in this game is not ideal at the moment. Hopefully they fix that a bit, but you don't want to be ruining your hard earned hard grade weapons on that. Here's one of my monkeys now. I wish they had some type of like monkey tree or something they all went back to because they wander a little bit and I lose them all the time. But if you have them set on follow, they'll start collecting food for themselves and for you. There's also monkey hollows that you can find around the place where a group of monkeys will start stashing shit. I want one for my house. That'd be cool. And it would be also cool because I could put food in there and then they would eat it and not die. I'd love that. As the monkeys do run around like absolute maniacs, it's best to stay put in one spot for a while with a bunch of monkeys and get them all to return to you and then they'll run away again. So if you're running around, you'll lose your monkeys real quick. Don't have them following you while you're walking about. I've already lost some monkeys. You can find them again though. They'll just, if you walk past them, they'll just start following you again if you haven't logged off or died since they were following you. I just randomly reacquire monkeys around camp sometimes. <laughs> but once you get a llama, you can make certain saddles. Oh, here he is back again. I think he's already run off again. Yeah, there he goes again. You can go to a safe place because they'll get murked by camps and alligators and all sorts of things also. And you can get a wicker basket, you can put it on there and then you get a little cage and because they return to the spot where they last were, well, we can pick him up. And also pop certain things in their um, inventory like nuts that'll keep them going. Wells are good because your followers will drink out of them if you don't have water skins, but you can put water skins on them. They won't die that way. And we can actually eventually get and pack a llama full of monkeys. And then we can unpack the monkeys when we're in that safe zone, stand in a the spot, they'll go gather some things, bring it back and that's a good way to get up some fruit if you need it because you do need it for a bunch of different recipes and you need some bananas and pineapples which you can't grow specifically but for the most part most recipes actually have options so you can click either either I have it papaya and guava for the bee drawing fluid because I grow those but if you happen to have a lot of pineapples and bananas you can also click that and then specifically if your thralls are gathering the materials from other boxes they will only use that. I do wish there was a bit more of a radial select wheel rather than this scroll down one as it does make
make it a little bit hard as you have to like go like that over it to select certain things like picking out benches or trying to ride your mount in a hurry you don't want to just press on it because then you'll start picking up things there's uh the you have to look at very certain places of your alpacas so right now i can't even look at his inventory so i actually have to go view items here that would be a lot better if it was not like this but hopefully that's something they'll improve on in the future too if you haven't spawned in as you're throwing you actually just want to take control of your body again it's easy as going control while you're a follower you can get other followers to follow you which is quite handy also and you can also yeah just basically do everything like you would as a person i'll have separate how to tame your thralls and all that guides and where to find all of those crystals because it's a little bit much to get into in one video this bird he's annoying but on pvp especially handy because when you're away from base and either you're getting purged or an enemy is about it'll tell you it'll be like why is the bad guy trying to touch me this camp sometimes the monkeys aggro them in here and they start fucking shit up usually they don't too much they'll return back to the like camps but this one's pretty close and the archers are pretty archery so it's nice to know especially if we're away from base if we're getting messed with they need to make him not so yappy though and i'm pretty sure you can get him a female because he goes on about that a lot oh and i should quickly mention also that the map markers super important you can make a tribe markers also so everyone can see them i can't make it an untribe marker now which is a little bit annoying but i can delete that one and then just place a new one where my marker is by pressing r selecting colors or whatever writing its name and then i can see it on my map if i turn on that function so i'd have it as maybe blue just to be a little bit different from a lot of my other markers for the monkeys or the farm you have a certain amount of markers that you can have you turn them on and then i can see them everywhere in the distance if i have a tribe marker other people can see them also so it's quite handy when you are running in that fog of war and to unlock that fog of war i should probably mention too things like the scout you need to um get them down a bit but there is a bit of a journey guide that tells you about it though that's okay when you first start out in the game but this guy here we want to kill him. He's not too hardcore. Actually, he's pretty hardcore. Sometimes they're um, a little little less hardcore than that, and sometimes a little more. You could tame that guy if you wanted. He's pretty decent. You get him down to 10% and then press E on him. You don't want to use your craziest weapons because sometimes you can do OP stuff like crit hits. So you, if you get him low but not low enough, just start punching them. It's pretty easy. And then take out the guys you don't want to tame first. With the scout, get him down to about a third, and then you can press E on him, but you can't tame the scout. Out, so you have to start killing him we were confused why we couldn't tame the dude that would be why but every time you kill him even after you've unlocked the fog of war of the area it'll start giving locations like this question mark that will tell you where a camp is there are more camps scattered about here that i haven't discovered and haven't killed enough of the different um scouts in the area for this area though i have caught all of the data i have and he doesn't let me tame him or inquire of his data anymore so um interrogate him i should say if i could speak what's well, a hard man so yeah you can keep interrogating them until you get all your data or you can just run around and discover locations on your own free willy-nilly that's a lot of stuff that i wish i knew before i started it made life a whole lot easier once i learned a bunch of those things just a little bit of user-friendly things some really really quality of life stuff and if you've made it this far you get the bonus of knowing that harvesting metal also gives you really good xp and most of them are pretty easy to harvest on the outside of the mines because you're looking for mines not random metal nodes around the place hopefully they are just like one hero there though it's a little bit hard to find these you can find shit on the outside there's usually something to find on the inside unless you're feeling frisky don't go in but you can find tin ore here 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 Ooh, i believe somewhere around here and there's copper 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 coal coal which you need for steel you can find a salt here you can also find some more salt over here and there's also another one up here somewhere I don't have unlocked. You can find some more tin down here, some more copper, some more copper. This is where you find sulfur. Can you let me? And it's some elite bosses. Yeah, whatever. You can find some phosphorus ore up here. There's more mines also. I haven't discovered them all. This is just my explorations into Deathville. Some more coal ore, nitrate ore, nitrate ore, salt ore. If you uh, happen to live further north and you don't want to venture all the way down, although this area is pure death. Then last but not least super lucky for you for making it all the way here 
especially if you're playing PvP, because here's the iron ore. This has taken a sweet bloody minute for us to find. You can kill dudes about the place and get like trinkets and random shit off them and find stuff in boxes. You can smelt down, but you're going to need this. And there is a way, if you are a lucky viewer of mine, that you'll be able to find the easiest way to get there and you won't have to venture through the desert, which is the current way most people go. We found a much easier route to get there and um, yeah, do that. <laughs> That'll be another video coming up. But I hope you found this information informative and really helpful and I hope you really enjoy Soul Mask. So far it's a really good game. I quite like it. I'll be dabbling in PvP here and there. I'll be making a bunch more guides. Check out the description for the link to the Discord and wishlist the game and if you haven't already and if it's already out, do buy it and have a go. Or check out a bunch of my videos and see if it's up your alley if you haven't seen much about it before. And until next time, I hope you have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever it may be, wherever you may be. Have a good one.